This video is proudly sponsored by the good people over at Discord. Yes, that free chat service for gamers. Create your own free Discord server today where you can talk to your friends or failing that your mother or something. Or you could just join mine, a link to which you'll find below. Right, here's everything wrong with German tanks. A vast subject, I agree, but one that I've expertly managed to compress into a small enough video. So here we go. Well, firstly, and put simply, they're guns. Well, they're too big, aren't they? Like this one here. You see, guns are like haircuts. They need to be short and well-maintained. Otherwise, they just get in the way. Why, you only have to look at one of the many documentary films out there, such as Kelly's Heroes, to see something like this. Ah yes, now here's a <coughs> tiger, and he's about to fall victim to his own oversized gun. Why yes, our plucky heroes have caught Jerry with his pants down once again. But oh dear, they've loaded paint and done up the back of that tiger like the fourth bridge. It's at this point that the <coughs> tiger attempts to traverse his turret in order to return fire. But alas, his vast codpiece of a barrel is just too big. And so, faced with this predicament, this commander attempts to pop off out to the shops to pick himself up a two-pounder gun made by a British armory. But not on Clint Eastwood's watch, as he brutally guns him down. Rather deservedly, I think. Now on to Exhibit B, with some more historical footage. And look, it's another tiger! Notice how they can't face their turret forwards, for fear of damaging the gun on something. No, 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 this simply wouldn't do in a combat situation. Whereas, in this historical archive footage, this British tank has no such trouble. In fact, the trees positively fly off the tank. Yes, in a realistic, normal, everyday physics way. Nothing wrong here. Anyway, this all allows for faster traversing of rough terrain, and is yet another reason to keep your gun short. Now the second thing that's really wrong with German tanks is that they're all too bloody fast. This panther tank here, for example, will do 55 kilometers an hour. Now I don't know how fast that is, but it'll do 35 miles an hour. Now that's too fast, especially for the infantry. I mean, it's almost as if Jerry designed his tanks, expecting his infantry to be motorized or something. No, no, that wouldn't do. Ah, yes, now this is more like it. This is a Churchill, the walking man's tank. The top speed, 15 good old-fashioned British miles in an hour. This beauty wouldn't... Hang on, any second now. Uh, this, no, too early. Aha! This beauty wouldn't do 35 miles an hour if you pushed it off a cliff, which means the average, highly trained British soldier can jog comfortably alongside you all the way to Berlin. And before any Germans in the audience write in to complain that I'm not being fair, and that the Cromwell is just as fast as the Panther, I'll have you know that the Cromwell had its speed limited to 32 miles an hour, just in case it was too fast. And that wasn't just because at 40 miles an hour it was so uncomfortable the men inside couldn't take it. It was for a variety of other reasons, like sportsmanship and fair play. Yeah, that's good. You can't have a tank that fast, it wouldn't be fair, which is precisely my point. Now moving on to the third thing that's wrong with those jumped up tractors the Germans like to call their panzers, is that they're too big. Look at the size of that one! You wouldn't get that through a Belgian forest? Why all you have to do is simply compare this giant German panzer to an equally capable British design to see there's a problem. Yes, these tanks all have enormous silhouettes, making them easily targetable by our more sleek and lower profile types. And that's if the RAF doesn't see them off first. Yes, badly designed tanks that are this big are even easier to spot in our aircraft. Speaking of big design heavy tanks, how is your Churchill doing? Ah, well you see, that's completely different. We have air superiority. We can build them as big as we like. Say, you're not German, are you? Nope. I'm Austrian. 
with some Prussian tendencies. Most people know me as military history visualized. I cover military history with an analytical and Right, moving on. I mean, you can check his channel out if you like, but I fancy he won't be uploading very much anymore. Not in the state he's in. Not after that. Right, moving on. Now, another thing that's wrong with German tanks is that they stay in service for too long. Now, you see, a good old-fashioned British tank has what's known as a service life. It gets built, it sees combat, it dies. Or breaks down. Or gets left in France. Or all three. Which ensures that our boys are left with the latest up-to-the-minute state-of-the-art kit at all times. Whereas the Germans, by contrast, well, they just don't get it. They keep their tanks in service for years. I mean, by the time it comes to fighting our lads in our cutting-edge designs, almost half of Adolf's lot are still trotting around in old Skodas they captured years ago. And since we, the British, are champions of fair play and decency, we think it makes for rather poor sport to shoot at the enemy when they're playing at such a decisive disadvantage. Enemy tank spotted. Gonna open fire, please. Are you sure, sir? Doesn't seem fair to me. I mean, it's so old. And finally, on to our last point. German tanks have very silly names. Like the Neubfuzzig, or that design classic, the Sudkerfutz 234 slash 4. I mean, half of them are named after bloody animals, for heaven's sake. Tigers, panthers, elephants, it's just silly, really. Such names don't really strike fear into the hearts of their enemies, do they? Not like the Valentine or the Tortoise, which granted is technically an animal, but what an animal. They live for 150 years, you know. And what's this? Excuse me, the Dicker Max? Oh, well, now they're just taking the piss. What does Dicker Max even mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means nothing. Nothing at all to me, because I don't speak German. Because we won the bloody war, because we know how to name a tank. Well, we invented them, didn't we? And so, there's everything wrong with German tanks. I would go on, but alas, I fear I'd only enrage myself further, and shout more, and there's only so much my voice can probably take. And so, on that note, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please dispatch a like via Carrier Pigeon. The last video got 14 thousand of them. So it's a miracle you've got any left, really. And if you haven't, well, just go to London or something. You'll be swarmed by the bastards. Anyway, I'd also like to thank not just one, but all of the people out there who are supporting the channel over on Patreon today. Who is the way that YouTube's been going lately with its distaste for anything wary have been magnificent. I tell you, try having 160-ish videos all with the word war in the title. It's hilarious. Anyway, cheerio.